All right. Good morning. We're here. It's still morning. Yes, it is still morning. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm having a rough morning. I woke up this morning with a nasty headache and uh, I've been kind of nursing that, but I'm proud of myself because we're a couple days out from the tax deadline. Remember, the tax deadline is Monday the 18th or um, Tuesday the 19th if you're in Maine or Massachusetts. And I said, you know what? I'm feeling really crappy this morning. And so I took like I took part of the morning and I said, listen, I know I'm not going to get anything done. I'm not going to be super productive if I don't allow myself to process this headache. So took some ibuprofen, rested a little bit, drank some coffee, feeling much better. But I did want to do this video for you guys today because I get a lot of questions you know, what technology do you use in your business? You know, how much is it going to cost me to get my business up and running? And so I wanted to kind of lay the foundation of kind of how I keep everything organized and rolling. And this is, this is the basis of what I call my tech stack. And you'll hear, you'll hear the term tech stack a lot um, in business. You know, what does your tech stack look like? What tools are you using? And so I wanted to kind of lay the foundation. And even if you don't have a business, these three things are really critical to being able to lower your anxiety and increase your productivity. Okay. And so we're going to talk about the three, these are like the, the foundational tools, the three things that I use. Um, so, and they're all free. Okay. There are free versions of all of these things. Okay. Um, because I also want to make it super accessible for you guys as well. OK, and in Bookkeeper Training School, I always try to provide free or very, very low cost or something that has like a long free trial so that you can get done what you need to get done and then get back, you know, get to work so that you can start making some money before you start investing in tools. OK, and so I think that that is really critically important. So if you're on the call, let me know today that you're here and I'd love to know um, what is your biggest struggle with your, with your productivity, with getting things done? Like what's stopping you from getting things done? Because that is super helpful as I'm going forward, making more videos for you guys. All right. Anissa. And so my head's still a little, a little wonky. Okay. So the, so the whole basis of, of my, my first level, right. Tech stack is that I need to get things out of my head into sources that I trust because one of the reasons that anxiety starts to flare its ugly head is when our brains do not trust that we are going to remember the things that our brain thinks is important. So things like appointments, things you have to do, things you need to buy. Okay. And so the more you have that is circulating around that is only in your brain and your brain does not trust that you are going to remember these things, this causes anxiety. Okay. And so what you, what you need to do is the first layer of your tech stack needs to be to create systems so that you have a place to put things so that they are out of your brain. Okay. And in a place that you will trust. Okay. Now there are two major types of things that we typically have rolling around in our brain. It's appointment reminders, right? So things we have to remember to do or appointments, obligations we have. Okay. So that is number one. And the second one is things like to-do lists, right? Oh, I have to make this phone call. Oh, I have to renew my insurance. Oh, I need to. Okay. And so those are the two biggest things. And so we have to develop systems to deal with these two things. Okay. And so I recommend that you have a long-term calendar, a long-term to-do list, and then a today list. Okay. And so I'm going to talk about all three of those things long-term calendar, long-term to-do list, to-day list, okay? Um, let's see. <laughs> My biggest struggle is having clients fill in the blanks with uncategorized expenses. Yeah, that's really tough. Um, I, will, I will address that at the end of the call. We'll talk about how you can do that. 
Okay. So, and this is kind of, and this kind of has to do with, uh, with what we're doing. So the first thing is a calendar. Now I really recommend, I'm a huge believer in having an electronic calendar. Why an electronic calendar? Because it goes with you everywhere. Okay. Think about this goes with you everywhere, right? Do we ever leave the house without these things anymore? I don't think so. Okay. So the nice thing is you're at the doctor's and the doctor says, okay, we want to see you in three months for a follow-up. Do you say, oh no, I don't have my calendar. Oh wait, no, hold on. Let me open this up. Right. So let me open up my calendar. Okay. What day are you looking at? No, you know, Mondays, you know, Mondays are day for my business or mornings. I always work on my business. So I can only do afternoons. Okay, great. And you get it scheduled. Okay. And now it is on your calendar. You have it going forward. You have to think, oh my God, when's my doctor's appointment? When is that doctor's appointment? When is that doctor's appointment? When's that doctor's appointment? When is that doctor? It's in here. And we look at these all the time. Okay. The other reason I like it being electronic is because it allows you to share it with other people. So Jeff, my husband has access to my calendar, right? And so I can see his calendar. He can see my calendar. We know, and you know, we both work from home, but we know like, oh, uh, like we had this happen, you know, this week. Okay. Monday morning, I had a doctor's appointment Monday afternoon. He had a doctor's appointment. And so we had to make sure that Okay, the other person was going to bring Eric to Taekwondo. Jeff had a doctor's appointment yesterday morning. And so we had to make sure, okay, are we going to do this together because it's a long drive? Is this something that you want me to go with you to? Um, so we can talk about it afterwards in the ride home. These are the kinds of things. And then the cool thing, if you have electronic, is that if you do want to do something together, it's very easy to duplicate the item to your calendar as well. Okay. Um, the other thing too, is if you're in a field where you're going to be doing discovery calls or client calls, and you're going to have booking software, having everything in an electronic calendar is going to make sure that you don't book something when you have a doctor's appointment, book something when you have another appointment, you're not available. And so having that electronic calendar is really, really key. Okay. Um, you can use Google Calendar, you can use iCalendar, you can use Outlook Calendar. Um, what I find is that Google Calendar and Outlook Calendar integrate with the most stuff, okay? Um, Google Calendar integrates with Zoom, integrates with Calendly, integrates with like every system I've ever seen, Google Calendar um, integrates with it. So you can use the calendar on your personal Gmail, or you can use workspace for business. If you use workspace for business, then you can, you know, decide if you want to use your business calendar. I just use my Google calendar though. And I add other calendars to it as, as needed. So I'm in a lot of programs that use, um, that like have their own calendar set up for when our meetings are, um, when we have got calls. So like, um, I have a call in about an hour um, with Julie Stoyan's mastermind that I'm in. And she has a Google Calendar for the mastermind. So we can see everything that's going on in the mastermind in that calendar. So it's super helpful. Um, so it's just nice to be able to have that there and say, oh, okay, I'm going to attend this call. I'm going to duplicate this to my calendar. So that way in Calendly, it's now showing up that I'm busy during that time. Okay, so super helpful. Okay, so that's the first thing. You need a calendar to put all of your obligations in. Okay, all the obligations go in there. Now, the second thing that you need is you need a master task list. Okay, a master task list is a task list where you are going to put everything that you have to do. Now, I've had people really push back on me on this and say, no, Kristen, I can't do that because it's super overwhelming. It causes anxiety when I see the list. Okay, the problem is that if you don't make the list, all of that stuff is floating around in your brain. And it's causing you anxiety from that, okay? Because your brain's saying, oh my God, what are we going to forget? Don't forget this. Don't forget this. When you get the stuff out of your head and you put it into a place that you check once a day, okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about how you're going to do that. You're going to check it once a day. Then you know that everything is captured. 
And your brain can say, okay, I do not have to remind Kristen 45 times a day to pay the credit card tomorrow because it's in a place, it has a date, she's gonna see it when she wakes up tomorrow that she's gotta pay the credit card bill, okay? So a lot of our anxiety has to do with our brains not trusting that we're gonna remember to do things, okay? Super, super important. So I do not capture things in my email um, because my brain does not trust that as a valid place for me to pull tasks from. And so what we use, uh, what, what I use for a long time is I used um, Asana, we've used Trello. Now we use something called ClickUp. My anxiety is me trying to figure out if Asana or Trello is my to-do list app. Okay, so this is great, Jennifer, pick one. Um, I honestly, I like Asana better the reason I like Asana better is because I can do list view or I can do table view. It gives me the option to do both. Um, it works really cleanly. The app works really well. Um, it's nice on, you know, you can use it well on your phone. So if you're out and about and you think of something you need to do, um, I like Asana better. I just think that um, it gives you the best of both worlds. Trello is very board based. Um, which means that everything, you make cards for everything. You can look at it as a list, but it doesn't work really great. Asana, you make your list. And if you want to view them as a board, you can. You can give, like, you can do status updates. You can put things into categories based off of if it's something that you're working on or it's something you're going to do later. You can put due dates. You can make things recurring, which is awesome. So like if you have to pay a bill every month, you can make it recurring to pop up. If you've got clients you work on every month, you can make that recurring so that it just pops up every month that you're going to work on that client again. It's absolutely fantastic, okay? Um, so really, really, I really like Asana for that, okay? Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of like course creators, a lot of people who are trying to sell you things like to use Trello because they offer... Trello boards as part of their, you know, as part of what they're selling, because you can share boards out, you can make boards public and you can allow people to copy your boards um, in Trello. But I think that it just, I like Asana better for like the look and feel and list make more sense to me, which is really funny because for Jeff, um, Jeff likes the board views better. He likes to see everything on a board and in different columns. And I'm like, I don't, I just need to see like, when are things due, right? And I need to see like, this is what's due next. Let me do this thing and I'll work down my list, okay? But, it's, but the nice thing with, with when we're using Asana is Asana would allow us to do both. And we currently use um, ClickUp, but I wouldn't recommend ClickUp unless you have, unless you have a, a team, okay? Stick with Asana or Trello, unless you have a team. And frankly, I think for most people, Asana will still work just fine with a team. Um, we just have a lot of really complicated automations that we bring in to ClickUp. Um, we have a lot of like customer reminders that we bring into ClickUp so that the team knows that things are going on. And so that's why we moved to, to ClickUp. Um, but I think for, for most people, Asana works awesome. There's Asana plugins that you can turn emails into tasks in Asana. Um, there's just a lot that you can do with it. And that's why I said, like, I don't use my email as my repository for things I need to get done. Um, I move things into Asana. So if there's an email that I need to do research on, if a client says, hey, can you look into something for me? Um, if I have like, a product I want to look at, if I have an inquiry that I can't deal with right now, like I'm doing that a lot right now because it's tax season. And I'm just kind of saying, okay, you know, after tax season's over, I'm going to deal with this, but I'm not going to deal with this right now. I know I'm not going to forget about it because I put it into my task management system. Okay. So electronic calendar, task management system. Okay. Now I said there's three pieces. Okay. The third piece is your daily is your daily to-do list, okay? Because here's the thing, I understand, listen, when I open up ClickUp, 
because my team knows that right now, like I am not doing anything that's not tax related. Okay. So I've got my calls for, for EBN, for bookkeeper training school. I'm doing some lives for you guys. Everything else is client work right now. Okay. So that means that there are a ton of tasks building up their video requests. There are questions. There are people that want me to speak or want me to do something for their course or want to talk to me about opportunities. All that stuff is building up in ClickUp and it's been building up in ClickUp for months. And so when I open up ClickUp, I'm like, oh my God, all the things. Look at all the things. It is crazy. So here's what I do, okay? I do not keep ClickUp open all day. I do not keep my calendar open all day, okay? Now, you have some options for how you do your day. You can do your day um, if you're in, if you're an Empower Bookkeeper Network, if you're in the Facebook group, you can search for the daily focus planner. You can print out the daily focus planner, okay? And that's free. You can print it out every day. Um, if you want to use a planner, okay, you can use your planner for this. If you don't, you can just use a piece of paper for this, okay? This does not have to be an expensive, an expensive endeavor, okay? You can use a piece of paper and that's fine. If you're in EBN, you can print out the daily focus planner. For those of you that are not in EBN, we are going to get you guys the daily focus planner pages. We just have to set up the, uh, we just have to set up the page for that, okay? Um, so that you guys can opt in and get it. So there are, when, if you're doing this on paper, okay, um, there's, there's a couple things you need to have in this. And that's why like you can use a planner, a planner works really well. Um, but you're going to have your schedule. And I'm actually writing this down on a piece of paper. You're going to have a schedule. And then you're going to have your tasks. Okay. And so this is all you need on a piece of paper. You need your schedule and you need your tasks. Okay. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to write out my schedule for the day. Okay. So like right now I'm starting. So it is, it's about 1115. Okay. On the East coast. So I'm just going to start at 11 AM and I'm going to put 11, 12, one, two, three. Okay. My day is going to end at about four today. Okay. So here's, here's my schedule for today. Okay. Now I know at noon, I have, um, a DI call for my mastermind at one o'clock. I'm meeting with my coach. Okay. So that means that I've got, if I'm looking at today, I'm probably, when I get off this call, I'm going to have lunch. Okay. So that way I can do my DI call. So basically I've got from two to four today as an open block to work. Okay. That's what I've got today. I've got from two to four. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, this is what I've got. I've got from two to four. So now when I'm looking at my tasks, right now, what I would do is I'd open up, click up and I would say, okay, what are the things I absolutely have to do today? Okay. So I know, I know that I have to schedule, um, EBN texts for tomorrow because I did not get that done. I just got Mondays and Tuesdays done. So I, I have to do that for tomorrow. So that way those texts go out for reminders for our calls. Remember we have two calls tomorrow. One at two o'clock, the Q and A, and then we have um, the book club tomorrow night. Okay, which that also reminds me, I'm also gonna have something for tomorrow. I have to finish reading the book, right, for the book club. Okay, so here's the thing. So notice this is what I've got going on my piece of paper. Okay. I've got space to write tasks for tomorrow or future. I've got tasks I need to get done today. Okay. And I've got my two hour block. So I'm going to get this stuff. I'm going to take this stuff out of my master task list for things I know I need to finish. Right. And then once I take the information out of ClickUp, I'm going to close ClickUp for the day. Okay. And I'm not going to open it again until tomorrow morning. Now you might say, well, Kristen, what happens if you come up with new things? What if there's things you need to add to ClickUp or Asana or whatever you're using? 
I'm going to add that tomorrow. Okay. So what I'm going to do at the end of today, as a, well, actually, as I'm going through today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, if I think of anything else I need to get, I need to do, or things I need to add, I'm going to write that into my block. Okay. And this end, you can do this in a planner, right? Or you can do this on a piece of paper, but have a place where you can capture new ideas you have, um, things you need to follow up with tomorrow, things you're not going to do today. And I want you, when you pull stuff out of your task manager, I want you to be really cognizant of what amount of time you actually have today. So I only have two hours today. That's all I've got, okay? And so what can I get done in those two hours out of my task manager? And that's all I'm gonna pull. And I'm gonna give myself leeway. So like I know scheduling the text is probably gonna take me about 15 minutes. I'm gonna give myself 30 just in case. Okay. Another reason you get anxiety is that you're overscheduled. And so let's try to under schedule you. Let's leave margin. Don't pull five hours worth of work if you only have two hours today. Okay. Because that's just going to rank up your anxiety. It's going to rank up your procrastination. And so if I have two hours today, I'm probably going to pull maybe an hour and a half worth of work. That gives me time to transition. That gives me time so that if something takes longer than I think it's going to, I'm not going to be overscheduled. I'm aiming for underscheduled. Okay. That's what we're aiming for. And so um, I'm going to schedule some EBN texts. I'm going to follow up with clients. And I've got one tax return to review. Okay. So here's my day. Okay. I've got my two hour block and I'm just going to write tasks in here. Okay. So this is what I'm going to get my tasks done. So I've got this two hour block for my tasks. These are the tasks I'm going to get done. And then I have space in here for anything else I think of as I'm going through. So if I have ideas for videos, um, if somebody asks questions in the Facebook group and I'm like, Ooh, that would make a really good video. I'll write stuff down. And then I will tomorrow morning when I do my planning, I will put that stuff in the click up. Okay. As I'm planning my day. Okay. So three things, okay. Three things that you need to have before you buy any other tools, before you start anything else. Okay. You need a calendar, okay, preferably electronic calendar, and you need to put all of your appointments into it. You need to have a task list that is digital. If you want, I mean, you could use a Word document if you want to. That's just fine. The reason I like Asana is that Asana, I can put dates in, it will resort things based off of due dates, and I can add emails into it. I can make things recurring. And so it just makes my life a lot easier using something like that, okay? And then you need to have a place where these are the things I'm doing today, okay? And every morning, I'm gonna take 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to write down my schedule for today. I'm gonna see exactly how much time I have to work on tasks. I'm gonna write out the, the three to five tasks I'm gonna to get done today. And sometimes it's gonna be one task. Maybe it's one big project you're working on, okay? You're gonna write down the one to five things that you're working on today. Remember to under schedule, not over schedule, and then have a place that you can write down other things that you think of that you need to get done, okay? So I hope that you found this helpful. And now Deborah asked at the beginning, my biggest struggle is having clients fill in the blanks with uncategorized expenses. Okay, so it is really important for each of your clients to figure out um, how you can best serve them with this. So sometimes, like I'll tell you when, you know, when our bookkeeper, Rachel, sends me um, our reports, yes, I've hired a bookkeeper because I realized that I don't have the time to do it anymore. Um, and it is so helpful to have it done on a regular basis. So I've actually hired one of our bookkeeper training school students to do our books in Ingram Digital Media. So 
when I get that, like I instantly do it because I know how important it is for her to have that information. Um, sometimes you might have, like, if you have a lot of things, you might have to like book a 15 minute call with a client and just say, Hey, let's just go through these real quick. Maybe it is, you know, maybe for your client, it is sending them a box. Okay. Maybe it is sending them an email and just saying, Hey, reply to this email. Okay. It may be that the first time you need to do it, you need to sit on a call with the client so that you can be on a zoom with them when they click the link and you can walk them through how to do it. Because sometimes clients are looking at this going, I don't know what to do with this. Right. And so figure out how can you best serve your clients to get the information that you need. Now, at the end of the day, okay, you have reconciled everything. You have generated reports. Yes, there's this uncategorized expense amount. If the client doesn't get it to you in a timely manner, it is not your problem. I know it feels like our problem because, you know, I know as a bookkeeper, I like to have things categorized properly for my clients. But if the client doesn't help you do that, you have to say, okay, well, you know, maybe we'll deal with this, you know, next January when the client's like, oh my God, I need to get my taxes done. Um, and it's unfortunate, but sometimes clients don't see the urgency in things like we do. And so I think that it's really important that we don't care more about our clients' businesses than they do. Okay. And I know sometimes that's really hard because I think we get personally invested in their numbers and wanting everything to be perfect. Um, but if the client doesn't see the urgency in it, then it's really important for us to take it down a notch and say, okay, you know, the client's not seeing this right now. So I need to, uh, I need to let it go for now. All right. So I hope that was helpful and I will talk to you all very soon. Take care, have an awesome day and leave your questions, um, about this topic. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.